Let's take a look at two more things we can do with objects, very simply, very basically, uh, basic concepts that make them easier to work with. Now, the idea in our previous code of printing out the object by declaring a print method is a pretty simple one. We take all the information we want printed, we throw it into a method inside of the class, and now any object that's created from this class can call a print method. However, it's generally considered a bad idea to have an object do its own printing. Generally, you want to have the main method be in charge of whatever the interaction is with the user, whether it's printing to a terminal or printing to a, some kind of a window or whatever you might be doing. So the typical way of doing this instead is to create a method that just returns the text you want. So instead, have a method that returns a string, for example. And instead of having the method inside the class directly print, what you might do instead is just create a variable and have that variable store the data that you want So here I'm basically going to build a string of text that gives me the result I want. I want my string to have the name, the description, the price, and I want it to say gluten-free if it's gluten-free. And after I've put that string together, I'm just going to return it. And we remember this from our uh, procedural programming um, how we create methods that can return data. So this method, this print method, is going to return whatever this temporary text is that we put together. It's going to return it um, back to our main method. Now obviously print as a, a verb is no longer really very useful. We might call this something like um, you know, get information or something like that about this particular menu item. And then in here, instead of calling the menu item to physically go and do its printing, I would simply print out the menu items get information method. So this menu item is going to go and grab its information about itself, and I'll print it out on the screen. And what you'll notice is that this is going to look exactly like the previous run of the code. Again, we're just refactoring all the same stuff, all the same results, we're just doing it a little differently. This idea of getting back some information about an object is so common that there's a built-in method for every single object you'll ever create that returns back some basic information about that object. And that method is called toString. Basically what it's doing is it's saying, let's grab this object, convert it to a string, and send it back. But watch what happens if I just call this menu items to string method. Instead of getting a nice description of each menu item, what I get back is a textual representation of where that menu item is in sort of the memory space of the computer, how it thinks about that item. It's in my restaurant menu package, it's in the menu item class, and it has this weird little... Um, hexadecimal code on the end of it. So that's not very useful. But the nice thing is that I can go inside of this menu item class and I can simply call my method toString. And by calling it toString, I am doing something called overriding the built-in toString method for this class. So there is already a toString method that comes with every, every class that returns information like we just saw, a reference to the package, to the object, and then some weird code. If you write your own method with the same name and the same, uh, we call this the prototype, what you're telling Java is, hey, ignore the one that's built in and run mine instead. And you'll see I get this little error message or this little warning that pops up. It says, let's add the override annotation. So, if I go over here, 
you see that I've got this little uh, light bulb popping up and it says well let's add the an override annotation because that now tells Java and other programmers who look at this code this next method is overriding the built-in one okay so it's going to take precedence it's going to run instead of the one that's built in so now my main class when it runs the main method it's going to run my built-in to string and you see we get our old text back that's what we wanted to see and the nice thing about the to string method is that if you ever try to just print an object the to string method is what you get back as the text so I don't even need this to string method here at all I can just print the object and the object will automatically run its to string method and return that text instead and you'll see that when we run this indeed that's exactly what we get okay so that's how the to string method works that's how overriding works you can do it with lots of methods not just the to string method